Ivan and Cullum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, Saints. Uh, we are. We we were talking about the studies that we've been on, and of course, last week, uh, you know, I commented on it. Uh, the uh, last lesson we the that we studied was the importance. Uh, or, or salvation that's expressed in the name of the Lord. And this week is the righteousness of God's name. What is the definition of righteousness? What's the definition of righteousness? Being right in the eyes of God. All right. All right. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. Very good. Uh, being lined up with God, not being lined up with what the majority says and uh, or or how people vote. Uh, it's that's that's not what's important. It's not being lined up with the culture of the day. I like that definition. It is being lined up with God because God is what's right and what he does is right. Amen. Uh, and when you are in line with God, it's, it also uh, it's it affects your relationship with others as well because you ought to have a not only a right relationship with God, you ought to have a right relationship with other people. Something's wrong with your relationship with God if your relationship is not right with other people in your life, whether it's in your family, whether it's where you work, what, whatever, saints. Uh, because God is the one that determines what's just, what is right. And so we're going to be looking at that today as we study in the book. Uh, we'll be in the Old Testament first. We'll look at Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, verses 5 and 6. And then we'll jump over to Romans, uh, the third chapter. And so let's, as we often do, let's begin. Let's read what the word of God has to say to us. If I can get a volunteer to read our scriptures for today, please. Ah, we are. Okay, thank you. Jeremiah 23, 5 and 6 says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and the king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Romans 3, 10b through 13. Right. There is none righteous, no, not one. Hmm. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues, they have used deceit. The poison of asaps is under their lips. Romans 3, 21 through 26 reads, But the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, 
being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God had set forth to be the propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remissions of the sins that are past through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Amen. Amen, saints. Let's begin <clears throat> with Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah is probably not one of your favorite books in the Bible. One of the reasons that it's not is because Jeremiah is a book that largely deals with judgment. I know we love to quote, and it's a good, great scripture, Jeremiah 29, 11. <clears throat> we, we love that scripture, don't we? And we apply it to ourselves. But when you read the book of Jeremiah in totality, it is largely a book of judgment. It, uh, there's a lot of sadness in the book of judgment. If you're looking uh, for a lot of encouragement, uh, and of course it's talking about not only what's going on in that time, and primarily that's what it's talking about, in the judgment that was going to come on Judah, uh, but it, it, it also talks about our day uh, today as well. Uh, because in this scripture that we are studying right now, Jeremiah 23, verses 5 and 6, it's talking about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and uh, is who he's talking about. Because he says he's going to raise up a, what kind of branch? A righteous branch. Amen. Amen. A righteous branch. And it was going to be of the seed of David is where this righteous branch was going to come. And, and, and what was going to happen is he was going to put on flesh. And what he did for us is he paid a sin debt for us. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Uh, and, uh, because he is the only one that could do it because Jesus was the only one that lived a sinless life. And so my sin and your sins, if you've accepted Christ, guess what? They're covered by the blood of, of Christ. I know it was the blood. How about y'all know that? <laughs> I know it was the blood. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, that, that covered uh, our our sins. And so uh, uh, what had happened in that day, just a little background on Jeremiah. Jeremiah had been prophesying some tough things to the nation of Judah. And he was, he was prophesying some impending doom that was about to take place uh, in Judah. Now that was largely rejected. And when you when you see how Jeremiah was, was treated, when you read the entire book of Jeremiah, I mean, they abused that brother. God spared his life, but they abused him. Uh, and what had happened is people had forgotten God. Hmm. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That sounds very familiar. Yeah. Because in our culture today, saints, and, and we, we say, oh, wow, this is crazy. All the different things that are happening. A lot of those things are attributable to the fact that we as a nation have forgotten God. We've left God out and, and we're reaping what we have sown. So, somebody said, boy, children certainly are different today than they were. Hey, a lot of that is our fault. <laughs> Amen. 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 A lot of that is we, we, uh, because uh, we did not put God first. Amen. Uh, 
uh, in our in our homes. And and what's happened is uh, a lot of the things that are happening today in our society. And so what what Jeremiah he targeted a, a group of people. And you know the people that that he held responsible first. Uh oh, y'all. This this y'all get ready. <laughs> He, he targeted the leaders. He said, y'all blown it. Amen. And, and when I say leaders, uh, specifically in this case, uh, the king of Judah was a bad actor. And, and they he was supporting a lot of things that were anti-God. Uh, and, and so uh, he... Uh, and 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 he said that I'm I you're not dealing with it, but I'm going to deal with you. <laughs> is what God says when you you look back uh, earlier in that chapter. And in and in fact, we see a name that he gives himself. Uh, can anybody pronounce that name for me? No, yeah, I, I won't ask you to do that. <laughs> Here, here's the way I attempt to pronounce it. Oh, go ahead, Maury. Okay, yeah, don't forget your mic. <laughs> Jehovah said, <Sid> Quinton. <laughs> All right, not quite. Not, 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 now, Jehovah Sikidnu. Sikidnu. I, I believe the T is silent. Jehovah Sikidnu. And it is a name that means the Lord, our righteousness. Amen. That, that's what that, and, and, and often what God did when he named himself, see, God is a, he's a relationship God. Woo, we should never forget that. He's a relationship God. And, and that's why there's so many names for Jehovah. If, if I started asking you, I don't know who got that last week that, okay, did you look at it? <laughs> all right. I need you to look at it. All right. There's a lot of names for God. And, and, and a lot of those names describe his relationship to us. And, and it describes his character. And, and, and one thing that God is, is God is righteous. So he is Jehovah Sikidnu. Um, we, I, I, I like the way, uh, that Verlin described what righteousness is, is because the standard is based on God's standard. Amen. What true righteousness is, what's right. See that if you want to know what, uh, one way to look at what uh, righteousness is, is whatever God's word says. And if people are just the opposite of what God said, See, that's, that's wrongness. <laughs> that's unrighteousness. Let me put it that way. That's unrighteousness. And, and if, if according to his standard, and his standard is not going to change. I don't care uh, what society says today, saints. Um, his, 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 his standard is going to remain, because this is, it's a divine standard. Uh, and he's saying that I am the standard of righteousness that you are to be measured by. When we read the book of Judges, uh, and Judges uh, occurred after Judah was taken into captivity, right? And remember how the what's often said in the book of Judges, that men did what was right. How? In their own eyes. That describes us today to a T, saints. Uh, men will do what they think is right in their own eyes instead of looking at what God has to say. And a lot of our values are based on our feelings. A wrong direction to travel, saints. Your feelings are very deceiving. That's why uh, with, with marriage, you can't base your marriage on how you feel because you that, that sometimes you want to hurt one another. You feel like that. Amen. Uh, but it, it's, it, sh it should not be based on feelings. It ought to be based on God's standards because he said, I am uh, the standard. 
uh, and uh, and what happens when we go against God? He cannot accept that sin. It, it, it's in, it, uh, it's going to create problems for us in our life. I'm a witness. <laughs> I've had situations in my life. Amen. Uh, I, you know, I, I know something I need to correct right now. I've, I've really gone crazy over the holidays. <laughs> Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> yes, you do. And, and there's a price you got to pay for it. I, I looked at my feet this morning. I wanted to put on some boots and I couldn't even fit in them because my feet were so swollen. And I thought, oh, Lord, Bill, this is the wrong direction. You're going to reap what you sow, saints. You, you're going to reap what you sow. And, and so if you choose the wrong thing, and that's a simple example. There are many other examples that we could that we could give, right? Then, then you're going against God and it'll never work. Uh, uh, now you say, well, Bill, we, all of us, uh, and, and we're about to get into that when we get into Romans, because I, I, I would certainly agree with you that none of us are perfect and that we have, we struggle, we struggle as a people, right? But I, I, I believe the Lord has an answer for that as well, because what he says is that I'm going to raise up a branch of righteousness. It's my offspring. Uh, and that that's what was so good about what we studied last week, because Jesus had the nature of God, but yet he was human as well. He put on a body, but he came here and he was without sin, saints. Uh, and and uh, you know what's great about that? Uh, and it tells us in uh, in Corinthians, doesn't it? that he, he became sin, and, and when he became sin, guess what happened that benefited us? That we might become the righteousness of God is what that scripture said. Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount, probably one of your favorite scriptures, right? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and what? And his righteousness, not 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 your political party's righteousness amen not what society says righteousness not not how, this is what this is the way my mother and daddy did it so i'm going i'm going to be the same way it has nothing to do with that it's god's standard uh, because that's what he brought to to the world uh, and what i love about that I, how many of you like to live on credit Probably none of us, right? One of the things I've, I've learned as I've aged that that has helped me, and I tell young people now, you need to monitor. You need to. You need to. You need to be careful with that credit. It can ruin you. It, it can put you in a hole in a great big old bind. Except for one thing, because you know how you're gonna get to heaven. <laughs> you're gonna get there on credit. It's not because of what you do. Amen. It's not because of what you do. That, that's the beauty of this lesson that we're studying today. It, it, it's, not, it's not based on my accomplishments. Amen. I, my accomplishments, my rewards are going to come from the thing. If, if, if God has given me a charge to do something, I do it and I do it faithfully. There are rewards in heaven for that. But as far as getting there, it's only based on Jesus. Because again, back to that scripture in Corinthians, that, that he became sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. Uh, and so, uh, hallelujah, uh, for that credit that he's given us. Uh, and, and what happens to us right now, and I'm glad you're here this morning, uh, that we're here together in this class, because what the, when you are saved, when you accepted Christ by faith, the spirit of God dwells within you. And as a human being, we can either feed the flesh or we can feed the spirit. It's your choice. That's why I said I'm glad you're here today. Because, because how, how are you going to feed the spirit? By the word of God. 
We need the word. <laughs> we, we, we need that word, saints. It's it's a good habit. If 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 you as you look forward to 2024 and you say, because uh, I don't believe in um, um, what, what do you say resolutions. resolutions. I don't. I, I I believe Lord help me daily to get in Your Word. I didn't I didn't say every Sunday, Amen. <laughs> I said daily because we need to feed on God's word. And if we feed on his word, it's going to build us up spiritually because we're going to think we're going to be kingdom minded, to put it like Tony Evans puts it. Uh, regardless as to what society is saying, we're, we're going to be guided by the spirit of God and his word uh, is what we have to feed on. And so if you start feeding on the things in this world, you're going to become, and I'm talking, I'm talking to Christians, you, you're going to become more and more like the world instead of being like God. And, and what, when, when he, when he sent his righteousness, which was his son, uh, that he's prophesying here in, in Jeremiah 23, it's, uh, it's so that we could be more and more like him. Yeah, we ought to sing that song, but we need to mean it, right? I want to be more and more like who? Jesus. Amen. I want to be more and more like Jesus. And 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 see the devil it works against us because when we choose when we make the wrong choices and, and we go against the righteousness of God, the devil feeds on that. And it helps to make us weaker and weaker. And that's why the Bible tells us in Ephesians 4 to put on Christ when it tells us in Ephesians six to put on the whole armor of God. Amen. Amen. Because you can't do this by yourself. Amen. You can't do it by yourself. Uh, and, and there's nothing that we see our righteousness. Isaiah told us, uh, he, he told us how bad it was. Right. And, and, and what was bad? Filthy rag. Yeah, yeah. Y'all, y'all want me to define what he means by spirit, uh, filthy rags? Man, and I'm not trying to. <laughs> this, this is just to help us, <laughs> and I, I, I want, I want us to go a little bit deeper. They, it, it was what women use during their menstrual cycle. That's what it was. You don't want that. I mean, that, that that's that's how, that's how our righteousness is, um, and and uh, uh, we uh, and, and what he wants to make us. First uh, Corinthians one and twenty, Jesus wants to make us the righteousness of God. In other in other, in other words, to go by God's standard and not by the world standard. And what's so good about it, what he's promising here, is he said, I'm going to restore. Maybe as we look forward to the new year and, and you look back and all of us can say this, can't we? Lord, I'm not everything that I want to be. Amen. And Lord, as I go forward, I want you to restore in me. Just like he, he, he promised, he promised Israel in the scripture that he was going to restore them. And guess what? Something phenomenal happened in 1948, y'all, that has never happened in the history of the world, where people that were divided, that were in all different nations around the world, in a new nation. Y'all, I tell you, our Bible is amazing. <laughs> it was formed, called the Nation of Israel. Yeah, they got some issues. I understand that. But they're still God's people. Amen. And 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 that that new nation was formed, and uh, and and so God's word is true. And He said, "I'm going to restore." And I guess here's the good news: the greatest restoration is yet to come, because saints, we just celebrated the first coming of Jesus last week, right? Guess what? We need to get ready, <laughs> Amen. Because there is a second coming as well, because His his righteous one is truly, we don't live in a just world right now. 
Amen. We do not live in a just world. Uh, and, and, and the world that when he comes and he reigns here, saints, it, it, he's going to uh, reign and there will be justice that, that's in this world. Well, let's look at Romans 3, 10b. Uh, when Paul is writing this uh, letter to uh, to the Romans, to the believers, and he's writing to believers, saints, uh, and and they're both Gentiles and Jews. And what he says to both the Gentiles and the Jews that uh, that he's writing to is that both of us have blown it. Amen. Both of us deserve. God's judgment, uh, and and that, and yet salvation was available to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, and he starts quoting some Old Testament passages here. We want you can make note of it if you want to read it later. But if you go to Ecclesiastes seven, what he talks, what he's talking about in verse ten b is from. It is he's paraphrasing what was said uh, in Ecclesiastes 7. And, and then in verses 11 and 12, uh, uh, he is quoting from the psalm, two, two different uh, psalms, Psalm 14 and Psalm 53. Uh, and... Uh, Because what we do as a people, uh, and, and we're prone to do that because we are human, uh, we can do some worthless things. We can do some things that are anti-righteous, uh, uh, that is unrighteous. That's us. Uh, but our righteousness is found in Christ Jesus. Those who believe on him, amen, that's where your righteousness is found. Uh, because he wants to do, and he's doing a work in you. That's that's why some of the things that we do in life, and we may wonder, why is this happening to me? A lot of times, the the potter is doing some shaping and some molding as we go through some of those difficulties in life, saints. Uh, and and so what happened? He sacrificed for us. Uh, there's some there's some uh, uh, words that uh, that are helpful for us to to understand uh, saints uh, and 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 one of them is the word impute impute uh, because he imputed the scripture tells us his righteousness to us in other words when God looks at us. And, and and I'm 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 not talk, I'm not saying that we're we're perfect, but it's because the blood of Christ covers us. He sees the blood of Christ, and he sees us as righteous. Amen. Amen. He he does. He he sees us as righteous. That's the only way that you can go to heaven because you're living on the credit that Jesus what is he what he has imputed in your life is is is, is what is what we're living off of. Uh, and and he put that upon us, and because he he sacrificed. See, g sin, God cannot tolerate sin, and so something very drastic had to happen, saints. And you know what had to happen? Jesus had to go to the cross, and he had to die from for our sins. Is is what he had to die because. There's a penalty that has to be paid for that sin. But hallelujah, uh, those who believe on him and believe, that's, that's why Romans 10 tells us that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, and then it, then it tells us what? Thou shalt be what? Amen. It, did, it didn't say that uh, it, if you confess with your mouth, attend church every Sunday, and read your Bible daily and pay your tithes that you're saved. That is not what saves you. Amen. Now, here's what here's what righteousness means to me when I am as a believer. 
what righteousness means to me. Uh, and I want to I want to relate it to my experience as a child. One of the persons that I least wanted to disappoint was my mother. You know why? Because I loved her. And I made mistakes and I blew it. And, and I had to be chastised from time to time, sometimes too often. <laughs> but that was my fault. It wasn't hers. But I had to be chastised. But, it, but in my heart, I wanted to satisfy my mother. Now, that's my mother. Listen, saints, when you accept Christ as your personal savior, there ought to be a desire in you that, 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 that you want to satisfy him. Let me give you a, an example in scripture as we, as we near a close to our study. I want you to remember that woman uh, at, the, uh, at the well that Jesus met. See, the first thing she started talking about was religion. And see, that's some of our problem, too. We're plenty religious. Don't let me set something on this table and some of y'all go crazy. <laughs> because it says, do this in remembrance of me. And oh, Bill, please don't put your glasses on, on, on the Lord's Supper table. See, some of that stuff is nothing but religion. Because there ought to be a change on in your heart. You ought to want to have a desire. And what did, he, what did Jesus, what did Jesus, and, and, and here's, here's one of the desires that you ought to have, that you ought to have. What, what, what Jesus told that woman at the well is he said that, that they that worship me must worship me how? In spirit and in truth. Amen. Where's the truth? The truth is in his word. Amen. Uh, uh, the, spirit of, the spirit of God as we as we get his word down in us and and we're committed to obeying his word amen just like me being committed to obeying my mother it's going to have a change and it's a change on the inside it's not an outside thing it's not for outside show amen it, it it's an inside thing and it's because i have a love for god i want to do that and and you, something else that that has to happen saints that will happen to you, that will happen. When, when, when the woman at the well finally realized who he was and accepted him, she got in a hurry. She got excited. And she didn't keep it to herself, did she? Amen. She went, she, she went, she went to all those people that criticized her and the town in general, and she went back and she brought them back, right? Because she said, I, I want you to see a man that told me about myself. Is, is that what happened to you one day when, when the Lord came into your life? It, it, it does something to you, doesn't it? Hey Amen. It, it does something to you. It, it's no wonder that there are times a, a song may be sung here in church. And I'm not just talking about sheer emotion, saints. But it reminds you of what God has done for you in your life, and it moves you. It excites you. Amen. And, and, and what, what, what that woman did is she went back and she wanted to do what, whatever she could to bring glory to God. And that's something else. If, if I don't have a desire to, to, number one, want to do what God says in his word, if, if I just can ignore that and what, what, what God says, uh, there's that's, that's something wrong there. And that's not to say you're always going to do it perfectly. I am not suggesting that. I said the desire to, to press on and, 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 and to move closer and closer toward God. And, 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 and not only uh, a desire to do it, but you ought to have a relationship with his people as well. Because how, another way that you're going to grow is that we need one another. Uh, we, th that's why it says in Galatians that if a brother is overtaken, brother or sister, is overtaken in a fault, that ye what? Which are spiritual. And saints, we ought to take things like that more seriously because that's going to bring glory to God. Going to bring glory uh, to God. And, and so uh, righteousness is, I mean, here's a... Here's, here's some applications. 
that we can take from this. The first thing that we've got to do is we have to admit we need Jesus. We cannot do this by ourselves. It's impossible, saints. Uh, and, and then, secondly, you have to, we have to, I have to guard against self-righteousness. See, the standard, the, the standard is not the people I'm looking uh, at in, uh, here at the church right now. Uh, or whoever else in life. If, if people tell me on the streets, yeah, I'm, I'm as good as some of you folks, you, 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 you are absolutely right. <laughs> you are. So just come on and join us. Because <laughs> I got problems, you have too. <laughs> Amen. And we can help one another. Amen. That's what it's about. That, 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 that's what it's about. Uh, and, and so uh, uh, we... And we should never get so self-righteous that because I've, I've been here for a day or two uh, that I can look down on somebody else, amen, or think that I have arrived simply because I'm standing here teaching Sunday school. Uh, that, 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 that doesn't qualify. There's always work for each one of us uh, to do. And, and Lord, help me as I move forward into 2024 to be more committed to doing your will. It's about your will, Lord. I always love to close my prayers in that. And, and I mean that, even though I have struggles with it, and all of us do at times, it's not my will, Lord. I want your will to be done. In my, I want your will to be done with my conversation that I have. I want, I want your will to be done with what my eyes see. I want your will to be done with what I think. I want your will to be done with what I read. I want your will to be done as far as my commitment to, to, to building up your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, help us as we move forward into 2024 because he is the God of righteousness. And Lord, I want to be more and more like Jesus. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, saints. Our last lesson on uh, the names of God will tackle next week. Amen. Look forward to that. And I pray uh, that as we move forward into 2024, that it is a wonderfully blessed year. And by blessing, I am in no, me that has, I mean, God wants to bless us in all kinds of ways, but it, it's far beyond the material. The most important way, God bless us spiritually as we grow in you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, we are thankful for this day. Uh, as I said earlier uh, in the opening prayer, Heavenly Father, I'm grateful that you have blessed me to see this last day of 2023. And, and Lord, if you bless me to see 2024, I pray, dear God, that I will have a more fruitful year for you. Use me, O oh God, and I not only pray for myself, but all of us that are assembled here. That's what our desire is. We love you and we praise your name. And Father, it is our desire that your will would be done in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Have a blessed day today, saints.
Father, we come before you this morning. Yes. First, God, just to say thank you. Thank you. thank you that, Lord, we have made it to the last day of the year. Yes. Yes. Not because we've been so good or grand, but by your grace yes. and your mercy. Yes. So, God, we come this morning asking that you would come and fill this place. Yes. Allow your Shekinah glory to fall in here, Lord. Let each person examine themselves, God. Yes and realize that we are blessed beyond measure. We thank you today, God, just for you being God. We come and we lift up the pastor to you and ask that you would let him down deep in the treasures of your word, that he would come proclaiming a word that some man, woman, boy, or girl would come out of the world and come to you. We thank you, God, that we can just cast all our cares on you, knowing that you care for us. We just ask that you would bless those who have a desire to be here today but cannot due to illness or whatever, God, that might be in the midst of their way. We just thank you that you are a God who's sovereign. I come right now and just ask that you would have your way. We give you thanks for all that you've done and all that you're going to do in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We will be reading from Haggai, the first chapter. All right. Haggai is the third book from the <laughs> New Testament. <laughs> and y'all probably saying, why Haggai? Well, this morning, at my morning church service, the pastor preached on <coughs> Haggai. Amen. And Haggai <coughs> was sent by God to tell the people it's time well, to start well, doing right. his business. Right. <laughs> they were going right. to rebuild the... Excuse me, y'all, I'm, I'm just giving you a little background. They That's were going right. to re rebuild yeah. the temple, mm -hmm. but 16 years they procrastinated. Mm -hmm. Wasted a lot of time doing things they want to do. Mm -hmm. Fixing up their homes. Not fixing up God, fixing up their homes. Mm -hmm. So he sent Haggai to tell them it's about time. All right. And so as we get into this new year, if the Lord let us live to see the beginning of another new year, well, it's about time for us to start doing God's business. All right. you know? And this Amen. is mainly for you know, this is for me too, you know. I know you're right. You know, it's for me too. So me too. Amen. we are reading oh. Yes. Yes. All right. I told y'all that. Now let me get it. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, entitled "The Call to Rebuild the Temple." Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you come across some big words you don't know, just say it where you think it is because this is not an English class. You are not <laughs> being graded. All good. right. Okay. All right. And the second year of Darius the king, yes, yes. in the sixth month. And the first day of the month came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Joshadesh, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of the host, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house shall be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, It, it is time for you, O ye, ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, houses, and, and this, this house lie waste. Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Ye, ye have sown so much, and, and bring in little. little. Ye eat, but ye, ye have not enough. enough. Ye, ye drink, drink, but ye, ye are not, not filled with drink. drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house. And I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Ye look for much, and lo, it came to little. And when ye brought it home, I did blow upon it. Mm. Why? 
said the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is waste, and you run every man unto his own house. Therefore, the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I call for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountain, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the lands. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God, and the words of Haggai the prophet, as the Lord their God had sent him, and the people did fear before the Lord. Then spake Haggai the Lord's messenger, and the Lord's message unto the people, saying, I am with you, saith the Lord. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shelatiel, the governor of Judah, the and the spirit of Joshua, the, the son of Josedek, the, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And, and they, they came and did, did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. God. Everybody. In, in the fourth and twentieth day of the sixth month, month, in the second year of Darius the king. king. Amen. Now, if you notice in the first verse, they started building this in the sixth month. God was not in their plan. But then later on, when God got in their plan, and the last verse, it only took them three weeks to Woo. build that. All right. Yeah. Yeah. For 16 years. So when you get God in your life yeah. and you do what you're supposed to do, Hell you go by doing God's business. It won't take you long. What can I say? All right. They, Amen. They prosper. Yes. Yeah. 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 So that's what we have to do. Amen. You know, go about doing God's business in this new year. All right. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank y'all, and may God have a blessing on His word. Amen. 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 I bless you, sis.
hand and clap of yeah. praise. Thank you. It's such a privilege and an honor to be in the household of the Amen. Lord as yes, we are Lord. about to enter a new year. Amen. 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 Is there anybody ready for 2024? Right. Amen. 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 We look forward to God working in mighty and awesome ways. But we got to take business, take care of business today. Amen. Right. right. Amen. This Amen. is the last offering. All right. Of yeah. 2023. Yeah. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. And make sure you give. Amen. 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 It's time for our offering. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Oh, that sounds good. It's time for our offering. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Our giving determines what? Our living. Our living. Let's worship God in our giving. Amen. Thank, thank right. you, Dad, for taking your place. Amen. I wonder Amen. what people are doing. Right. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Let's worship. Amen. <laughs> Everyone, please stand and face the first drop on the back, please. <laughs> Church, uh, son in the ministry, Reverend Bruce Ford. We're excited to be there tonight and excited to bring the word tonight. Amen. And we're uh, looking forward to bringing in uh, the new year. That's right. Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Also, I want you to continue to pray. Uh, it happens after prayer. We want to pray in the new year. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. Uh, so when you get the pastor's prayer list on Tuesday, and I want you to pray us on in. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. And praise uh, yes, Lord. the Lord. Amen. We're in the last series, a sermon in a series that I've entitled The Unlikely Series. Uh-huh. And throughout uh, this series, we took a look at all of the people that God used who were really unlikely people. Um, he was going to bring in his son, and, and he prophesied that there would be one that would go before him, and you would have thought that God would have chose a, a young couple. Uh, a woman of childbearing age, but we learned about uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth, both unlikely people mm -hmm. to be parents of John uh, the baptizer, the one who would go before God. Mm -hmm. And then we saw Mary, and we called Mary unlikely 
Um, because Mary uh, was young and she was a virgin. Right. And there has been no time in history before or since uh, that you would choose a virgin uh, to give birth to a child. Mm -hmm. Highly unlikely. Mm -hmm. John's birth was highly unlikely. Uh, Caesar's Augustus, uh, uh, Edith that sent Joseph back to Bethlehem was highly unlikely. Right. All of these people being used of God were unlikely people. Mm -hmm. Looked at Joseph, was an unlikely stepdad. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus. Really, Jesus wasn't unlikely because he was God. You know, when you're God, anything's likely. Hello, somebody. All right. And when you have God on your side, guess what? Anything is likely. And that's what we're going to talk about today. The you, a unlikely story. We're going to talk about you today. All right. Um, and we're going to be looking at Jeremiah 29, 11. You, an unlikely story, and most of us know this scripture by heart. Let's stand in reverence to the word of God. Right. Let's stand symbolically saying that I will stand on the word of God mm -hmm. for the year of 2024. And let's read this together out loud at the same time on three. One, two, three. For I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you says the Lord, plans for peace and well-being and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Amen. You may be seated in the household of the Lord. Again, we're talking today about you, a unlikely story. And as we look in the text, we're going to see an unlikely people, we're going to see unlikely plans, and we're going to see an unlikely peace. We want Christians to know today that Christians should manifest God's unlikely plans for their lives. Let me say it again. Christians should manifest God's unlikely plans for their lives. We're going to look at this brief video, then we'll get to the word. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. This verse is a crowd favorite. Everybody likes to quote it and talk about how great their life is going to be. But did you know that this is spoken about a specific group of people That's right. who had a really hard and difficult situation they were facing? If any verse was ever written to help somebody not give up, it was this one. It was like God was saying, I know your situation is a total mess. I know it looks bad. I know the assignment that I gave you seems impossible. But listen, I know the plans. You can see the now, but I can see the then. And I don't think things will work out. I know they will because I made the plans. So people stuck in captivity, dudes, hang in there with me because this will get better. And when it comes to your story, in my story, God would say the same thing to us. He does not say, I know the plans I have for you, and they are 100% easy all the time. You know, the plans are to give you hope and a future eventually. Good plans don't equate to an easy journey. The word plans means something in the future, out there in the distance, still a ways off from the current. When a builder draws up the plans, the client dreams about the finished product. But the building process from plans the product is super messy and sometimes the client gets a little nervous, but a good builder will take them back to the plans. Follow the plans through the mess and reach the final product. Plans are just the beginning. You have to walk through the process to get to the intended future. So don't give up with it going against stuff. Don't doubt the good plans God has for you because today isn't feeling so great. The people in captivity that Jeremiah was writing to had a really tough road ahead. You might have a tough assignment, yeah. but the plans are good when God's in the story. Amen. So don't give up with the process on your way to the payoff. He knows the plans, and he is good. Amen. Amen. 
Yes, he is. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You, a unlikely story. As he said uh, many times, we choose or look at this text and take it out of context, mm -hmm. or we don't flush it out to say or to define what it really means. Uh, what this text meant was that there was a people that was in captivity. And uh, the people that were in captivity were in Babylon, mm -hmm. uh, enslaved. As a matter of fact, due to the context of the text, uh, God told him at first to make yourself comfortable. Mm -hmm. Eton's translation. Because mm -hmm. you're going to be here for a while. Right. Yes, he was uh, talking about, and I think I heard the Sunday school teacher say how long it would be. Mm -hmm. how, how long would it be? Seventy years. Seventy years in captivity. Mm -hmm. Seventy years in slavery. One of my favorite recent films was well, not really recent now, but it was 12 years a slave. Mm -hmm. 70 years, you're going to be in captivity. So what you need to do is to make yourself comfortable. Make yourself at home. Mm -hmm. Build houses, have children. Mm -hmm. Ah, because you're going to be here for a while. And that's why uh, theologians don't like you coming to this verse and believing the pie in the sky. And that's right. why yeah. right. the Sunday yeah. school teacher said you don't read Jeremiah too, too often. <laughs> right. And Amen. he said you don't read Jeremiah too often because of what? <laughs> it's a book of judgment. Right. Right. Amen. Hello, yeah. somebody. Right. God will hold you accountable for your sin. Hello, somebody. Yes, sir. Yes, you will. Made the observation. We are like in the days of judges. Everybody's doing what's right in yeah. their own oh, eyes. Lord have mercy. Ah, uh, they don't want to get married anymore. Right. They want to just live together. Right. All right. Bring Hello, somebody. Amen. And there's some brothers that don't even want to even go that far. They can't even. They won't even let you define the relationship. So women, oh, describing their relationship, say it's complicated. Yeah. Oh, it ain't that complicated, honey. He ain't committed to you. Right. 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 Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. You wonder why you ain't met his mother and brothers? And hello, somebody. You, well. you, you, you the side chick. Hell, I should be met it like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello, somebody. But people are doing whatever they want to do. We, we live in a mad world. Mm -hmm. And you better not call me the wrong pronoun. Y'all know my pronoun? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello, somebody. I'm supposed to be he, but yeah. it, might, it might be more complicated than that. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's what they say. Hey, everything that looks like a he may not be a he. I may be identifying as something else. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. I said my pronoun is it. I was joking, but it is really a pronoun, but people identify themselves as it. Hello, somebody. Hello. We're doing whatever we want to do. Making up all kind of rules. No standards. Right, right, right. Well. And, 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 and for Christian folk, we're disobeying the word of God. That's the way the worldly folks are supposed to be, but we, we bring that stuff in the church. Oh, amen. Hello, somebody. And I was sure you did not just about Babylon and, and, and but God was saying that, that one day after 70 years, hello somebody. He had plans for them. Hello, somebody. 
So for me to be a good theologian, I have to explain the background to this text and let you know it's not just a pie in the sky kind of text where I can just Oh, paste it over my life and just believe God's going to bless me. All right. God, the video said it wasn't even really about blessing. Right. Yeah. Hello, somebody. But that's all we like. That's what we bring that stuff in the church. Right. Yeah. Ah, we like to sing those songs. Open the floodgates of heaven. <laughs> Let it rain. Yeah. In 2024. Guess what? That can be God can have some plans for you, but they don't necessarily mean. Mm, I know you're right. Yeah. Amen. Mm. Especially if He wants to get glory from your story. Remember, right. we're making this about you. Right. Uh, is it easier to get glory uh, from your life when things are going perfect? Yeah. All right. Hello, somebody. Amen. Oh, 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 what God like to do? Hello, Joseph. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Put you in slavery. Right. Because right. he got plans for you. Right. Ooh. Oh, you don't hear that on TV. Right. Yeah. God says, I know the plans and the thoughts I have for you, for you, for you, and for oh, brother Joseph. It was literally almost 12 years of slave, for real, for real. Right, right. Amen. Hello, somebody. Those were his plans. Mm-hmm. Did he eventually prosper? Yes, he did. Right. But if you asked him, was it easy? Mm-hmm. No, no. Hello, somebody. Somebody's going through a hard time, and right. you have a hard time believing that God wants you to go through this mess, uh, to go through all of this right now. And I'm here to tell you, uh, who knows? Whether you're called for such a time as this. All right. Amen. To carry God's plans. Mm-hmm. Woo! We only like to plan to prosper. Hello, somebody. Mm-hmm. But don't you know that you can't be prospering in turbulent times? Yes, you can. Amen. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. God has plans for you in 2024 for you. And I'm not saying that these plans are easy. Right. Amen. I'm not saying that in 2024 you won't have any problems, that you won't have any tribulations. But what I can say is that he does have plans for you. Yeah. Amen. He he wants to get glory from your life. Uh, And and even though you are unlikely, I call them people unlikely for these kind of plans because they were already in captivity. Seventy years! Unlikely! You would think God wouldn't have any plans for them because they blew it. They messed up. Somebody blew it in 2023. You messed up. And your life is in an uproar because of the mistakes that you made. You know it was you. Hello, somebody. Like some of these quarterbacks we see. That last night. Through an interception. Guess what? That was on him. Hello, somebody. And other quarterbacks you'll see. You'll see they make that there. And I remember seeing Tua doing the same thing. He's like, that's on me, man. That's on me on the sideline. I said, that's on me. I made the mistakes in 2023. And have you ever noticed that the team don't give up on them when they make mistakes? Thank you, Lord. Hello, somebody. Well, some teams won't. I don't know what they're doing with Russell Wilson. Hello, somebody. I guess what? Russell Wilson tweeted. God's got me. Yeah, there you go. Hello, somebody. Right. He tweeted, God's got me. Yeah. Guess what? Mm. Give me 85 million to sit on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> 85 million to be <laughs> traded. <laughs> Who trained me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My contract is guaranteed. Don't you know you love and serve the Lord even when you messed up? Oh, and times go uh, turbulent on you, and it may not be the kind of times that you want to have. He wants to play the game. Yeah. yeah. He was about to lead them into the playoffs. They, these are bad plans for him. But, but he had to know in the turbulent time of his life that God's got me.
me. Hello, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Don't you know that God's got you? God's got you. Yeah. yeah. Hello, yeah. 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 Even when you messed up, even when you have blown it. Oh, for the second time. Because somebody in here just messed up for the second time in their life. He said, preacher, don't go into 2024 line. <laughs> I done blown it to hoochie to hello somebody. Right. Time, but God still has plans for folk who are not perfect. Plans for folk who, 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 who made some errors, made some mistakes. Some pra- he still had plans for these folk. They were unlikely people to have plans for. All right. But guess what? God had plans for them. Woo, he has plans for you. Yes, sir. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And praise the Lord. Jeremiah again. 30 and 10. As for you, O Jacob, my servant, do not be afraid, God says to you in 2024. Do not be afraid, declares the Lord, and do not be dismayed because somebody's dismayed because of the trouble, because of the tribulation. Oh, whether it's divine or whether it's self-inflicted, God says as you go into 2024, do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. Oh, Israel, that's you, Say, Put your name there. For I will surely save you out of what? A distant place. God is going to save you out of this distant place that you find yourself in emotionally. God's going to save you from this distant place. Oh, from your family, from your friends, uh, oh, in your marriage. Uh, oh, you may feel distant at work. Uh, you f- may feel disconnected, but God says today, I'm going to save you out of this distant place. And God did it for them after 70 years because mm-hmm. he had plans for them. Yes, yes. Hello, somebody. He has plans for you in 2024. You've got to continue mm-hmm. to serve him in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes I'm unlikely. Yeah, unlikely. Mm-hmm. I'm like old brother Pete. I, I done blown it several times. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm unlikely. I'm, I, 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 I'm like old brother David. I done, I done messed up. Mm-hmm. Hello, somebody. We get on him for being on one rooftop. Some of us been on 25, 50, 70 rooftops. Tell us something. My Lord. Ooh, I blow it in this life of unlikely. But guess what? God still has plans for me in 2020. All for in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. I like that bit of history the Sunday school teacher gave us. Mm-hmm. It was a year. Anybody remember that year he talked about? 1948. Mm-hmm. Which was it? 1948. Mm-hmm. Somebody said 49. 48. 48! Mm-hmm. What happened? Mm-hmm. Israel became a nation. Right. Israel, out of the blue, he stopped bringing them back. Hello, somebody. And they became a nation. Yeah. Oh! Them back. Right. Ooh. Amen. Yes, sir. His grace and mercy extends as long as you're willing to serve him. His grace and mercy extends yeah. even into this life. He's a real God. Yeah, yeah. He's a God of history. That's why we like to tell you about the history because really history is his story. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> and he said, I will bring you out of distant places and your descendants from what? The land of their captivity. Of their captivity. <laughs> Somebody's being brought out in Jesus' name. Thank you've you been captured. Oh, to drugs. You've been captured. To alcohol. You've been captured. Oh, to ungodly relationship. To smoking and cigarettes. I know most of us don't believe in making resolutions. Uh, but some of us uh, all are in captivity. Oh, and it's all right to think that you want God to bring you out of captivity that stuff has been killing you that stuff has been uh, oh misusing and abusing you you've been captured and God says in 2024 I'm going to bring you out in Jesus name out of unemployment hello somebody out of divorce court hello somebody out of bankruptcy hello somebody God says I'm going to bring you out in Jesus name Oh, if I was really 
preacher inside and say, say to your neighbor, neighbor, oh neighbor, <laughs> yeah. say, God, I'm bringing you back. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I think I'm going to do that tonight, yeah. so I'm going to save that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> unlikely. You are the unlikely person in the story. It's you. Oh. Point number two. Unlikely plans. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, for I know the plans and thoughts I have for you. And this is why it's easy in and hermeneutics to say that, hey, maybe this text is not talking to me specifically, but the one thing I do know about my God is he does things in decency and order. One thing right. I know about my God is that everything he made, he had plans for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me say that again. Everything he made, he had plans for. And we think, oh, man, oh, these rats, man. Oh, I don't know why God created rats. Don't you know rats are God's filters? Mm. Woo. I don't know what his plans for buzzards are. Don't you know buzzards are God's filters? All right. Mm. Woo. Mm. Mm -hmm. Everything God made, he had plans for. H hello, somebody. Let me say it again. Everything he made, he had plans for. And guess what? He had plans for you. Amen. Yes, Lord. You may have been a mistake for your mama and your daddy. But God says that I formed you in your mother's womb. He said, I have plans for you. Nobody in your life all oh, may told you. Oh, that you have any value. They may have talked you down. All of your life never recognized any talents, gifts, or abilities that you have. As a matter of fact, some of you have so uh, much uh, uh, low self-esteem because of where you came from. Because uh, nobody around you uh, had the insights or the abilities to tell you why you were born. All right. To tell you that God has plans for you, thoughts for you. Oh, when nobody else was thinking of you or about you, God has plans for you. Yes, he does. Woo! Yeah. Everything he made, he has plans. Yeah, everything. And, and, and I would encourage you this next year uh, to discover God's plans for your life. Mm -hmm. To discover God's purpose for your life. Mm -hmm. So true. Hello, somebody. One of the most foundational uh, things that I learned from Dr. Tony Evans. He said that if you're going to work and you hate it, you can't stand it, you're probably not living out God's plans for your life. Well, <laughs> my Lord. And that messed me up. Mm. And I, and I gave my life over to God. I said, God, oh, whatever you have for me, Lord, I, I want to live out your purpose for my life. And undoubtedly, I know I'm living in the purpose because, I, oh, I love what I do. Hello, somebody. I, I love people. Hello, somebody. But I had to be willing, oh, to submit to this. For my life, yeah. you know, guess what? I ain't want nothing to do with no preaching or pastoring at all. All right, yes, sir. I hear you. But God has plans for me, yeah, that's it. And I had to surrender, I had to surrender, I had to throw in the white towel and say, Lord, whatever you have for me, I, I, I want to live in wherever you want me to go, I'll go. I would have never thought back then that I would have left Dallas, Texas. Boy, I love my city. Mm. Like some of y'all love West Town. <laughs> Tell right. somebody. Mm. Some of y'all grew up on Tough Street. Mm. Oh, I grew up in Oak Cliff. Yeah, yeah. You better recognize. <laughs> yeah. Oak Cliff, yeah. Texas, boy. Mm. <laughs> you know, when you get mad and get out of the spirit, you tell folk where you're from. You better recognize. Boy, I'm from Tough Street. Tell them somebody. Mm. Hell, somebody loved it, loved it with all of my heart. But I fell in love with God. All right. Hell, somebody. And when I fell in love with God, He could tell me anything. He could tell me any place to go. Hell, right. somebody. Are you in love with God? All right. Good question. Good question. Can, can He get you out of yourself? Can He get you out of your own plans for your life? 
one preacher, nationally known preacher, uh, announced plans that he was going to retire. And if you know anything about me, I, you know, I'm raising my, oh, really? Can you retire from what God called you to do? Well, Can you retire? I don't ever plan to retire. All right. Okay. All right. Now, if I have to slow down, I'll slow down. Yes, sir. But, 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 but even, even in that, I don't want to slow down. Right. <laughs> but if I have to, but I don't ever want to retire. Because I don't believe that's biblical, I mean, with what I do. Right, yeah, yeah. What I, I do. do. Yes, sir. My calling. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, because some of y'all need to retire. Hell, somebody. Yeah. <laughs> you have less stress. <laughs> well. Be able to sleep through the night. <laughs> it's you, remember, it's plans for you. My God's plan for you. It's not your plan for me. Hell, somebody. So you got to manifest this in your life, what God has called you to do. Right. But anyway, I use that story to say, I think it was like three or four months later, he, he announced that he wasn't retiring. Mm -hmm. Because it wasn't God's plans for his life. Mm -hmm. That was his plan. Right, yeah, yeah. Wanted to retire. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. And live in warm weather somewhere out there in the Caribbean. My wife wanted to retire in Jamaica. <laughs> 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 she would love to retire to Jamaica. Yeah, man, I might like that too, Jamaica. Man. <laughs> hey, we can start a church in Jamaica. Hey, then I'm not retired, I'm still working. Hello, somebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But God has plans for you individually. Yeah. Right. Don't ever let anybody say that your life wasn't a plan from God. Because they devalue you by saying that. That's what they devalue you. Some of you need to have some what I call Christ the King. Don't you know God has a healthy uh, self-esteem? Mm -hmm. You have a healthy self-esteem. Oh, yeah. He don't think you should worship nobody else. That's right. That's right. Just like that woman in a marriage. Don't think you should be with anybody else. Mm. Don't you know who you with? Mm. You already won the prize. <laughs> All right. Hello, right. somebody. Right, right. God has plans for you. Mm -hmm. And like we said, it's not necessarily going to be easy. Right, right. <laughs> this ministry, the call to ministry, is not easy. Hello, somebody. As a matter of fact, I done got a few gray hairs from, from this. <laughs> but uh, God has plans. I'd rather be in his plans with gray hair than outside of them. Hello, somebody. Right. About to have a stroke and a heart attack. Hello, right. somebody. Yeah. We want you to go in 2024 knowing that there may be unlikely plans. Unlikely to you, not unlikely to God. Right. All right. My right. life is so unlikely, it's pitiful. Mm-hmm. And I'm so glad he had thoughts about me. All right. Yeah. I'm so glad he had plans for me. Yeah. Boy, I'm just so excited for us. And Lord, I ain't had no good sense to know coming to the Bethlehem Baptist Church here in Paul Valley. Oklahoma could be such a blessing to me. Had no clue, no idea. That he, but he had plans. All right. Yes, sir. Well. And, and, and for me, I have been prospering. Hello, somebody. Tell somebody. All right. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Let me. What time is it? I'm out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Psalms 45. Many, O oh Lord, my God, are the wonders you have done, the plans you have for us. None can compare to you. If I proclaim and declare them, they are what more than I can count. God has, oh, so many plans for your life. God has, oh, so many blessings. Oh, God has, the sermon said, I can't even declare it. I can't count it all. Heavens. All right. When Thanksgiving, and really all the time, you need to count your blessings. Right, amen. Hello, somebody. Count your blessings. 
and, and start numbering among them. And I used to wonder why old folk used to always say, I thank God for my health and strength. See, as a young man, that wasn't an issue. Hello, somebody. <laughs> but the older you get, hello, somebody. Your health is strength. I used to wonder why the old folk used to say, I woke up in my right mind and tell, hello, somebody. Some days I don't wake up in my right mind. Hello, somebody. <laughs> I'm about to tell you, you, you about to leave, leave that boy alone until he get his coffee. Because <laughs> he don't wake up in his right mind. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. God has plans for you. Now, you say it ain't going to be easy. You know, we supposed to go in last night to Dallas Cowboy. You know, we ain't never lost at home. Big night! Jimmy was going to get put in the ring of honor. A big night! We usually score 40-something points. A big night! Hey, they won! Hello, somebody. But it wasn't the way they planned. <laughs> somebody say they got that game, that game got game away. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Hell, they call. Yeah. I wasn't too mad. <laughs> but anything you, 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 you have... Any plans that you have together, he just don't let you make it. He don't care that you're on your own field. He don't care that you ain't never lost there this year. Oh, he gonna come at you, and he's gonna try to take uh, everything that God says uh, that you can have. Uh, and you've got to be willing in 2024 to not give up, uh, to keep fighting, uh, oh, to keep going, uh, to keep, uh, oh, hope alive uh, in the midst of the darkness. Uh, oh, it's going to be a fight uh, in 2024. But guess what? If you don't give up, uh, you'll win uh, in the end. Uh, hello, somebody. I said, if you don't give up, you'll win in the end because these are God's plans. Yes. God's plans. Yes. Hello, somebody. It's God's plans for you. Unlike people. Unlike your plans, this last point. And we'll go home. Unlikely peace. Mm -hmm. For I know the plans, thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for peace and well-being and not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. You telling me that I'm in the Gaza Strip and you said you got plans for peace and well-being? Yeah. <coughs> you telling me that my people got kidnapped by Hamas and you and it'd be just like the same. That's when the word came to them. Mm -hmm. uh, they were in captivity. While they were doing their 70 years, God says, uh, and to which, uh, oh, he wanted to manifest hope. Basically, he was saying, you may not be in peace right now. Oh, it may seem like you don't have any well-being. Uh, but if you stick with my plans, oh, it won't be a disaster. Because you're looking at the now. That's that Luther Van Dross theology. Here and now. <laughs> you're looking at the here and now. And you're like Luther, Luther Van Dross saying, A chair is still a chair. Even when there's no one living. You're depressed. But a house is not a home. Oh, anyway, let me come on back. Let me come on back. Let me come on back. <laughs> You're looking at that house not being a home right now. But God says, I've got plans for you. Oh, God says, oh, you may be looking at dark times right now. But i got plans for you. And if you don't give up, oh, there's a future. Oh, the future is so bright. Oh, that you got to rest shades in Jesus' name. Future and a home. Yeah. Hello, somebody. And this morning, God wants to send you in 2024. 20, oh, with a future and a hope. Even though 2023 may have been a bad time for you. Amen. 
look forward to 2024 believing oh, that I've got a future and knowing that I got some hope up in here. Yeah! I got some hope! Uh, one time I preached this sermon about, I don't know the statistics, it's just popping in my head, so I'll talk kind of around it. Uh, but this scientist put a rat in some water, put that rat in darkness, and I think he said he, the, the, the rat swam for, I think they said about two or three hours in the dark. They said that the next test they did, they put a rat in some water, and, and they put just a white bean a, 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 a light beam in the midst of the darkness. And, and I think they said that rat swim for over 36 hours. Because he could see the light and he could have hope. Yeah. All right. Yeah. God, it says for somebody today, oh, I know you've had a hard 2023. Uh, I know you've been thinking about giving up. Uh, oh, I know it's a holiday season where many folk will oh, commit suicide and become depressed and lonely and alone. And God says uh, today that there is hope uh, for you. God says uh, I've got that beam of light uh, and all you got to do uh, is to keep your head above the water and keep swimming. Uh, oh, keep your head above the water and keep hoping. Keep your head above the water and know uh, that God is on your side. And if God be for you, yeah. he's more than the world against you. Oh, let me say it again. If God is for you, oh, you better keep on swimming. If God has plans for you, you better keep on living. If God has plans for you, you better keep on hoping in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Bethlehem. Saints of God in the vision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You may be an unlikely people. You may have unlikely plans for your life. Mm -hmm. But you need to keep this peace. Mm -hmm. Best illustration of, of peace is uh, the center of an eye in a hurricane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That always mystified me. Mm -hmm. One of the most powerful right. earthly mm -hmm. disasters that you can go through a category five wow. hurricane yeah. come in off the land oh and it's ripping and tearing everything apart right but in the middle of that storm mm -hmm. is what they call the eye peace hello somebody Right, and God right. says, that's what you need to be. That's what I'm going to do for you this next year. I'm not saying that there won't be any storms. I'm not saying that there won't be any trials or tribulation. But what I'm saying is, oh, that I can give you an unlikely peace. Oh, in the midst of the storm, peace. In the midst of the trial, peace. In the midst of the tribulation, oh, peace. In the midst of a lost and dying world where people have lost their minds up in here, up in here, God can give you peace. In hey, Jesus' name, I'm out of time. All eyes closed, heads are bowed, saints of God. Yes, Lord. I'm going to take this opportunity to extend the Prince of Peace to some today who may not know Jesus Christ yes. as their Lord and Savior. Yes, you may not know the God that I'm talking about who I said that have plans for you. Mm -hmm. And the first part of his plan is that, is that you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You must believe all oh, by your heart and by your will that, that God sent his only son when we, we celebrated this last year for God, uh, last week uh, and with the Christmas story Jesus being born in Bethlehem him being born to die wrapped in swaddling clothes. Uh, he was wrapped in swaddling clothes because he was born to die for your sins. 
and my sins uh, because God had plans for Jesus. Hello, somebody. And Jesus uh, manifests God's plans to die for the sins of the world. And today, if you believe that Jesus Christ is God's only son, that he died for your sins, was buried and raised again on the third day, then today you can be saved. Sit by your seat right now. We'll lead you in the prayer of salvation. I want you to sit by your seat right now. Come on, come on. I know I'm out of time, but we'll wait for you. That's right. We've been Amen. praying for you. That's right. We'll wait for you for this. Is that one? There may be another decision that you have to make. Maybe a decision to be baptized. You've accepted him. But you didn't follow the first step of obedience, which is to be baptized. And if you slip out of your seat, come forth, and we'll be happy to baptize you. The first step of obedience is baptism. Perhaps there's somebody here today, and you don't have a church home. We would love for you to be a part of the family of God right here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. Right. Amen. All you have to do is come forward and we'll extend that right hand of fellowship. Yes. Welcome you to the body of Christ right here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. Yes. What a way to start the new year outright. It's a be in this place. You can become a member today. Maybe you need prayer. Maybe you need to rededicate your life. Yes. Maybe you need to accept I always like to say a call to preach, but a call to serve. You're not doing anything for God. Don't you know that God has plans for you? For the body of Christ right here for you to serve in some capacity, some kind of way. To use your gifts, talents, and abilities for the body of Christ right here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. All right, amen. Any of these decisions? Is there one today? Is there one? not going to tear it on. These are decisions that don't necessarily have to be made in public. Because baptism, the first public profession, is baptism. So, Amen, sister. Is there another? Amen. Is there another? What is your decision today? Go in the new year with the right direction. Yes, Lord. A new direction. God's plan for your life. Is there another? Is there another? We're waiting. Yeah. Is there another? Is there another? dealing with some issues emotionally and mentally yes. and realizes that God is what she needs to help her through. Mm -hmm. So she's asking us to pray with her and for her. Amen. 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 She realizes in order to live those plans out, she has to submit her will to God. Because God did know her in her mother's womb. And God does have plans for her. And she needs some help today. I'm going to ask Deacon Jones to lead us out. And if anyone else feel led to pray, then I'll close. Shall we pray? I'll follow the children in heaven. Yes, Lord. 
we magnify and praise your name. We glorify you. Lord, we are grateful for your word that we heard today as yes. a father. And Lord, it touched the heart of our dear sister. Yes. She needs you, Lord. Yes. She's calling upon you. Yes. And Father, we're obligated to pray for her. Lord. Yes. Which we are delighted to do, Heavenly Father, yes, because we know that we serve a God that answers prayer. Yes. So I pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of because Jesus. Because you are the Prince of Peace, yes. dear God. That you would give her comfort, strength, and peace yes. in all the things that she's struggling with, dear yes. God. And may she just grow through this trial, Heavenly yes. Father, and give you glory. Yes. It's in the name of Jesus, Jesus. we pray. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. First, just thanking you, God, that she had the knowledge to know that it's you yes. that she needs to call upon. Yes. God, I thank you that you are a mind regulator. Yes. And a mind fixer. Yes. So whatever it is, Lord, help her to just cast it to you, for you are God who cares for us. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for thank what you you're going so to do yes. in this young lady's life. Yes. We lift her up to you. Yes. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Yes. Yes, Lord. Father God, we are so elated for this young lady. Yes, yes, Lord. We have seen, Lord, how you calling her and drawing her closer to yes, you in the last Lord. few months. Yes, right, yes, Lord. We've seen her father make all the right decisions. Yes. Oh, to be at the household of the yes. Lord. Yes. Making all the right decisions. Oh, Lord, to join the church, making all the right decisions, oh, to be amongst God's people. Yes. And, Lord, I see, Lord, that you're all oh, restoring her life, Father, in Jesus' name. Yes. And, Father, Lord, now you're working on her emotions, Father, she said today, Father. And I pray, Lord, that you will change her heart, mind, and soul, Father, that you change her self-esteem into Christ's esteem, Father, that she can esteem herself uh, the way, Lord, that you uh, created her to be, Father, in Jesus' name, that you enable her to know, Father, that she's the head and not the tail, that you enable her to know, Father, uh, that she deserves God's best, uh, that you enable her to know emotionally, heal her mind, uh, heal her heart, uh, heal her soul, uh, in Jesus' name. Uh, I heard the old folks say that you're a mind regulator, Father, and a heart fixer. Oh, Father, regulate a mind and a heart and a soul, Father, in Jesus' name. And she's crying out to you for the new year, Father. Work, Father. Be Jehovah Jireh and provide for her every need, Father, that she might have a testimony about how God met her right where she was and raised her up. In Jesus' name, oh, put on a rock that is higher than she is, as the psalmist said. In Jesus' name, yes, Lord. Jesus, yes, Lord. give her father, yes. provide for her father. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, sis. God bless you. God bless you. God has plans for you. Yes, he does. He has marvelous plans for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Will you please stand as we give the benediction again? For those of you who can hang. <laughs> All right, yes, sir. We'll see you tonight. <laughs> Pray for your pastor. It's my bedtime, 10 o'clock. Right. <laughs> and I'm supposed to preach. <laughs> Amen. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We praise your holy name. Mm -hmm. We lift you up, Father. Mm -hmm. And we look with great enthusiasm for the next year. Yes, Lord. Knowing, Father, that you're going before us. It may not be easy, Father. Yes. But we know, Father, we have the victory in Jesus' name. Yes. Put your hands of protection around us. Keep us safe from our harm and danger. Yes, please. Until we meet again. Yes. And the people of God said, oh.
Happy New Year! For those that don't see tonight, Happy New Year!